Drowning in dense research papers? Deep Dive is where two AIs break down academic and market research, so you don't have to. From quant finance to AI policy to economic models, we translate it, explain it, and deliver what matters. Like, share, subscribe, knowledge should be accessible, not locked in PDFs. Fresh AI insights delivered regularly. And here it said right, in finance, when you're modeling something tricky like uh, stock volatility, how much prices jump around, that the, the newer, more complex models are always better. Machine learning, deep learning, yes. all that yeah. stuff. Exactly. The idea is these algorithms just find patterns that older, simpler methods miss. And look, this is crucial stuff. If you're managing risk, pricing derivatives, making big investment calls, you need good volatility forecasts. Absolutely fundamental. But what if that core belief, that complexity, always wins? What if it's not the whole story? What if the old ways, done right, can still compete? Well, that's precisely the question at the heart of a fascinating paper we're diving into today. It's called Hard to Beat, the overlooked impact of rolling windows in the era of machine learning. Hard to beat. Okay, I like that. And it zeroes in on forecasting realized volatility, basically measuring how much stock prices actually move during the day. So they're putting the classics head to head with the new ML crowd, a volatility forecasting showdown. Pretty much. The core question is, uh, Stark. Yeah. Do these advanced machine learning models really outperform a classic workhorse like the HAR model that's heterogeneous autoregressive for predicting volatility? And they use this massive data set, right? Over 1,400 U.S. stocks. 1,445, yes. A huge sample. And the finding was, it's complicated, that maybe the comparisons we've seen before weren't quite giving the classic model a fair shake. That's the kicker. The paper strongly suggests the HAR model might have been, well, underestimated because people weren't always implementing it in the most effective way. Right. Okay, mission for this deep dive. Let's unpack this. Figure out what they found, why it pushes back against common thinking, and what it really means for how you should choose and use these models. Sounds good. So first, let's just quickly define realized volatility, or RV. What is it in practice? It's about the actual price swings through the day, <laughs> not just open to close, right? Yeah. Exactly. You use high-frequency data prices recorded maybe every five minutes. That's pretty standard to capture all those intraday ups and downs. It gives you a much richer measure of actual volatility compared to just using daily prices. So it's not just the final score. It's how messy the game was. That's a good way to put it. And getting good forecasts of this RV is critical. Risk managers need it for calculating potential losses. Option pricing relies heavily on it. It feeds into so many informed decisions. Got it. And this paper's data set, 1,445 stocks, high frequency data from 2015 to late 2023. That's a solid foundation for testing. Oh, absolutely. It allows for very robust conclusions, much more so than studies with smaller samples. Okay, so the prediction target is clear. The data is huge. Yeah. Who are the contenders in this hard to beat challenge? All right, in one corner, the benchmark, yeah. the HAR model came out in 2009. Its strength is really its simplicity and how easy it is to understand. How does it work again? It predicts tomorrow's volatility using a weighted mix of volatility from yesterday, the average over the past week, and the average over the past month. Daily, weekly, monthly components. Seems intuitive. Just looking at recent history on different timescales. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been around. People use it. Definitely a standard benchmark. And they also test a common, powerful tweak, the HAR VIX model. Ah, uh, adding the VIX, the market's fear gauge. Exactly. You just add the VIX index level yeah. as another predictor. It's simple, but research shows it really helps because it brings in that broader market expectation of future volatility. Okay, so that's the classic team. HAR, simple, interpretable, maybe with a VIX boost. What about the machine learning challengers? They lined up some popular ones. Lasso, which is like a smarter linear regression than random forests, gradient boosted trees, DBTs, and feed forward neural networks, FFNNs. And the thinking is these ML models can sniff out complex nonlinear relationships in the data that HAR, being linear, might just miss entirely. That's the usual argument. Financial data is noisy, complex. It feels like ML should have an edge. And to be fair, some previous studies did show ML models beating HAR. Which brings us to the core argument of this paper. They say ML isn't some magic bullet here. The real story, they argue, is more about how you use the model, specifically this fitting scheme idea. This is really the crucial point. For a model like HAR, you don't just estimate it once. You typically re-estimate it over time as new data comes in. 
The fitting scheme is about two key choices you make when doing that. Okay, what are they? First, the training window size. How much past data do you use each time you update the model? A year, two years, four years. Second, the re-estimation frequency or stride. How often you update it? Every day, every week, every month. So seemingly small details. Mm -hmm. How much history and how often you refresh the model based on that history. Exactly. And what their analysis, especially in figure one, shows quite dramatically is that HAR's performance is incredibly sensitive to these choices. How sensitive? Like minor tweaks or big swings? Big swings, particularly the frequency. They found that re-estimating the HAR model every single day, a stride of one, is critical. Performance drops off noticeably if you only re-estimate every two days or every five days. Wow. Daily. That feels intensive. <laughs> but crucial, you're saying. It seems so. If you're not constantly feeding the model the very latest information by re-estimating, you're leaving accuracy on the table. And the amount of history? The training window? That matters too, though maybe not quite as dramatically as the daily updates. Generally, longer windows are better, up to a point. They found the sweet spot seemed to be using around 2.5 to 4 years of past data for each estimation. Shorter windows tended to perform worse. Okay, so the optimal HER strategy looks like look back a few years, but crucially, update that model based on the latest day's data every day. That's what the data strongly suggests, and this is where they circle back to those earlier studies where ML looked better. Ah, the plot thickens. They argue that some of those studies might have handicapped the HAR model by using, well, suboptimal fitting schemes, maybe re-estimating only once a quarter or even less frequently, like every 250 trading days, as one study did, or perhaps using training windows that were too short. So it wasn't necessarily that HA was worse, but that it wasn't running at peak performance in the comparison, it wasn't getting its best shot? That's the central thesis. The HRR model's strength isn't just its equation, it's how diligently you implement it over time. If you slack on the updates or use the wrong window, its performance degrades, making the complex ML models look better than they might otherwise. That really reframes the whole debate. It's not just algorithm versus algorithm, but implementation matters hugely. Okay, so knowing this, how do they set up their big comparison test? They ran this huge horse race using their 1,445 stocks. Compared HR and Air VIX using both standard OLS estimation and also weighted least squares, WLS, which can sometimes handle volatility data better against Lasso, Random Forest, GBTs, and the neural network. And critically, they made sure the HAR models were fitted the optimal way they identified. Yes, they used that rolling window approach. A 630-day training window, roughly 2.5 years, and crucially, re-estimated daily. And HAR is simple enough that this is computationally cheap. Table 2 in the paper really highlights how fast HAR is to fit. Okay, but what about the ML models? Daily re-estimation with hyperparameter tuning for, say, a neural network across 1,445 stocks. That sounds computationally brutal. Exactly. It's often prohibitive in practice. Table 2 shows the ML runtimes are much, much higher. So for the ML models, they used a more standard approach. A static training period, 2016-2020. A validation period for tuning the model settings, 2021. And then the test period, 2022-2023. So a bit of an apples to oranges fitting approach dictated by computational reality. In a way, yes. But they tried to give ML a fighting chance. They fed the ML models extra information, like 100 past lags of realized volatility features a basic HAR model doesn't use. The idea was to let ML use its power to find complex patterns if they existed. OK, fair enough. So HAR gets optimal fitting, ML gets extra features. How do they measure the winner? Statistically first. They use two main statistical loss functions, mean squared error, MSE, which measures the average size of the squared forecast errors, pretty standard, and also QLT, another one common in volatility forecasting that tends to penalize under predictions of high volatility more heavily, more sensitive to tail risks. And they didn't just pick the single best number. No, they use something called the Model Confidence Set, or MCS. It's a statistical procedure that tries to identify the set of models whose performance is statistically indistinguishable from the very best one. So which models consistently belong in the top tier? Makes sense. But stats are one thing. Did it translate to, you know, actual usefulness for an investor, economic value? Yes, that was the next step. They used a realized utility framework. Basically, imagine a simple investor strategy that uses these volatility forecasts. How much better off is the investor using forecast A versus forecast B? How do they quantify that? It's expressed as the percentage of wealth that investor would hypothetically be willing to pay to get access to a specific model's forecasts. A measure of tangible economic benefit. 
And they calculated this both with and without factoring in transaction costs. Okay, the moment of truth. Optimal HAR versus feature-rich ML across this massive data set. What did the numbers show? Well, looking at the statistical results first, tables three, four, and five in the paper lay this out. The HR model, especially HRWLS, and particularly when you add VIX, was consistently competitive or actually outperformed the ML models. Outperformed even the neural networks and boosted trees. Yes. Across the board, the HR variations appeared in that model confidence, set the group of statistically best models far more frequently than most of the ML contenders. Which ML model did best? Lasso was generally the most competitive of the ML bunch. It sometimes made it into the top set, but random forest, GB and the FFNNs generally lagged behind the well-tuned HAR models. And did adding VIX help everyone? It generally improved performance for most models, confirming its value, but it gave a particularly strong boost to the HAR framework. And the results also suggested that using WLS instead of standard OLS helped HAR perform better on that QIC metric, the one sensitive to big errors. Interesting. So statistically, the classic carefully tuned HAR held its own, often winning. What about the economic value, the investor utility? This is perhaps even more striking. Tables 6 and 7 show this. The HR models, particularly HR WLS, delivered the highest realized utility values. Meaning investors would theoretically pay more for the HR forecasts. Exactly. And this held up even after accounting for transaction costs. The difference wasn't trivial either. An investor using, say, the Lasso forecast would actually be willing to pay a fee to switch to the HRWS forecast based on the improved utility it offered. Wow, that's a really practical bottom line finding. The supposed simplicity of HR actually translated into better portfolio outcomes in their simulation. Precisely. And they also check if this was just some weird effect from including lots of smaller, less liquid stocks. Good point. Does it hold for the big guys? Yes. They looked at subsets like just the DJIA stocks or just the NASDAQ 100 stocks. The results were consistent, and in fact, the underperformance of ML relative to the well-tuned HAR was often even more pronounced for these highly liquid major stocks. You can see that in the appendices. So it's not some niche effect. Yeah. Okay, one more thing. Did the performance change much over the test period? Was HAR just lucky during one specific market phase? They looked at that with cumulative performance plots, figure two. It suggests the difference wasn't driven by just one or two events. The gap between optimally fitted HAR plus VIX and the ML models seem fairly consistent over the 2022-2023 test period. Interestingly, some ML models actually showed a bit of performance decay relative to HAR plus VIX over time in the full sample, though that specific trend wasn't as clear in the big stock subsets. Okay, let's pull this all together. What's the big message here for people listening, practitioners, maybe academics, anyone trying to forecast volatility? I think the biggest takeaway is, don't automatically assume complex is better. This paper provides really strong evidence that mastering the implementation details of a simpler model like HAR, getting that fitting scheme right, can lead to results that are not just competitive, but often superior to sophisticated ML models for this specific important task. So the secret sauce for HAR isn't some hidden complexity. It's just diligence, daily updates, enough data. Pretty much. Diligent execution seems key, and there's a very real trade-off here that practitioners need to weigh. ML models can be incredibly powerful, yes, but they demand vastly more computational power, more time for tuning, more expertise to manage effectively on a rolling basis, especially across hundreds or thousands of assets. That runtime difference in Table 2 was stark. It really was. For many situations, a properly tuned HAR model hits a sweet spot. It's fast, it's transparent, you understand why it's giving the forecast it is, and, as the study shows, it can be remarkably accurate. So. If you're building a system, the message is benchmark properly. Before you invest heavily in a complex ML solution for volatility, make absolutely sure your HR benchmark is running optimally daily updates, right window size, because it might just be. Hard to beat. It really grounds the discussion. Sometimes the biggest gains aren't from the newest algorithm, but from perfecting how you use the tools you already have. All right, so wrapping up this deep dive on hard to beat. The classic HR model, when you treat it right daily re-estimation, good chunk of history really holds this ground. It's a powerful, often superior benchmark for realized volatility, even against fancy ML. It definitely challenges the narrative. In this rush toward ever bigger, more complex AI, maybe there's still huge value in really understanding and nailing the implementation of simpler, interpretable methods. It leaves you with a thought, doesn't it? Mm. It's hard to beat telling us that sometimes simple done exceptionally well is just fundamentally better than complex done. Well, 
maybe less than optimally, partly because the complexity itself makes optimal implementation so challenging. That's a great question to ponder, especially the next time someone claims a new AI model makes all the old methods obsolete. Definitely food for thought. Thanks for breaking this down with us. My pleasure. Always interesting stuff. Still here? Then you're not just scrolling. You're searching for substance. This isn't just another quant podcast. It's AI translating complexity into clarity. So smart ideas reach smart minds. Like, share, subscribe, join the thinkers, skip the noise. Let's make research accessible together. Liked how that paper got decoded? We've spent 20 plus years turning machine learning and AI into real world tools, not just slide decks. Whether you want to implement a model, validate research, or build something from scratch, we can help. Explore our showcases to see it in action. Visit our site or contact us directly. Let's turn complex ideas into working intelligence together.